What's going on everybody? This is Dave from Steel City Drones. Today we're on location and we're gonna do a special test for the Matrice 30. So what we have here is a nice portable parachute that's lightweight, that can stay within the weight requirements of the Matrice 30. And it's a company that's called Flyfire. They make something called the Owl Pro and it bolts right on top of here. It's held in with these two safety cables because what's gonna happen is when this deploys, this is gonna go ahead and blossom and it's gonna pull off of the aircraft and then these two attachments right here will keep it on the aircraft to be able to support it. This is able to detect any kind of malfunction anomalies on the aircraft. So let's say your batteries run out or there's a problem with the IMU or the flight controller or something's going wrong, it connects right into the SDK port right on the top here and it will be able to sense real-time flight information to do that. Now if also we have to go ahead and deploy this manually, what it will do, it's going to go ahead and kill the power to the motors and that way it's going to come straight down. So to deploy the parachute, we have to use the remote controller that comes with the kit. We cannot deploy the parachute in the pilot app settings. The remote for the parachute attaches to the back of the RC Plus remote and we had to hit both buttons at the same time twice fast. The parachute is also rated at IP45 so you can use it in the rain. So they have a minimum recommendation of about 40 meters high, about 160 feet. We have all kinds of different drone operators that are gonna catch us from different angles. We have three ground cameras on here. So we're gonna get really get this and really test this. Now, the other benefit of doing, having a parachute on an aircraft like this is so that if you're say with public safety and you wanna fly over people in case of emergencies or you even want to try to uh, attempt to be able to get a waiver the, a parachute really goes to be able to help that get not approved so all these things really help with that if you have a coa flying and you're allowed to fly directly over people in case of emergencies you know a parachute is a very good idea here now they say that the fall rate is about four meters per second so we're going to go ahead and try to really document the fall all the different ways around that. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Taking off.
wind definitely took it for sure. Oh, let's, let's see. Here. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, we broke an arm, didn't we? Yeah, broke an arm. And uh, I think, yeah, this is rotated also. So we got uh, one propeller damaged on the one that's good and one completely just off. Looks like it's just the end part of it. This. I'm going to turn this off. Looks like the camera's still good. Looks like it came down at an angle like this. And uh, we have to take a look at it from a get our views. And then I'll go get that cartridge out there as well. It came off like it's supposed to. So overall, I would say, let's go ahead and get this on the bench and we'll take a look at it more. So we were able to assess the damage. We brought it over here, took a good look at it. Now, what we have is minimal damage. And you can see right now the boom is broken off, but it's just the plastic part that actually bolts into the inside part of the airframe itself. So it really is, it's a very low expensive part here that actually broke off and only one of the four props broke. And I kind of expected more props that were gonna break. So minimal amount of damage on here, but also to recap what we had, we dropped it at 250 feet and it deployed it, it fired off just as expected. It went and deployed off and fired off the top part of it and it landed more toward the center as we expected. What ended up happening was that when the parachute blossomed, as you can see, all this is all tangled right now, but we had the, the rip cords that as they were attached to the aircraft were all getting tangled with the booms. And then it ended up more in this of an attitude like this then when it came down, this boom was the first thing that hit to break the fall, which broke that one part. And that really is the only damage that we're seeing out of this. So again, minimal amount of damage. Obviously, you know, this is, you know, it would have been nice to be able to do this a second test on this and just hope for a bad prop. But, you know, that's kind of what, you know, when we're doing new kind of tests like this, you never know what we're going to get. So that's kind of where the damage was so when we actually came down i was kind of more expecting it to be able to come more toward the center line we actually put that landing pad right in the center when we got up in the air i put this right over that landing pad so that we would be centered up right in the middle of the field but to my surprise, the parachute did take it off center line more than I expected. But the bottom line is when it did come down, it was at a very low speed. So when we have a 14 pound object like this, free falling at 250 feet, at least it's not gonna kill somebody or hurt somebody significantly. When the motors turn off, the aircraft starts dropping over 20 miles an hour, and then it starts slowing down to about eight to 10 miles an hour. And as it's getting close to hitting the ground, it's about six miles an hour. And that's about three meters per second. So this actually even slowed it down even more than Flyerfy specs. 
And then the only other thing that I would have liked to seen out of this is that, you know, we had that manual little remote controller that was on the outside of the remote. Now, I would have loved to be able to see that where we could have gone into the SDK on the menu settings on Pilot 2 and been able to engage it that way. But I think I understand why they're doing this is because they don't want someone to accidentally prematurely engage the parachute accidentally. So having that spare remote where you have to do both buttons and you have to not just put both buttons at the same time, you have to hit them twice both at the same time. So that's, I think that's the reason why they had that. This is another module, this is another parachute module that it's very easy to be able to switch out. So this is the original one right here. And all we would have had to do was take these four set screws right here off and then attach that to the new module and then we'd be able to go ahead and do another test. So they, the company makes these kits where you can buy just one parachute or you can get a replacement module as well. They sell it both ways. So if you're interested in a system like this, please give us a call and we can sell it to you and we can definitely give you some technical support on making sure this gets installed properly and used properly. But that's kind of everything that we have right here. So I hope you enjoyed what we saw here. I, I kind of really thought this was kind of fun. And now one thing that please, if you haven't seen our Instagram page, please check it out. We have a brand new Instagram page. We're putting a lot of content before we get it on YouTube on Instagram. We're doing daily uploads and you'll see we already did a lot of updates regarding this test already on Instagram before you're seeing it on YouTube. So please check it out and follow us on there. And if you haven't yet, please help us grow the channel. Hit the subscribe button. You're going to see more cool tests like we see right here. That really helps us out. So thanks again for watching. If you have any questions, reach out to us. We'll be glad to talk to you. Thanks again. Steel City Drone Flight Academy offers the most comprehensive on-site commercial remote pilot training program in the United States. Our team of professional drone instructors has more than 30 years of combined experience and have trained more than 1,000 students to fly drones commercially. We offer on-site training anywhere in the United States. Our most popular training package is a four-day commercial program. Day one, it's an introduction to drones day, an introduction to flying day, equipment familiarization. Day two, is all day flying. It's our advanced flying. You learn up to 15 different practice exercises. You learn how to fly manually without any automation. And you're gonna be amazed by the things that you can do by the end of the day. The third day is what we call advanced ground school. We teach you everything that the part 107 test does not. And that's gonna be everything, nuts and bolts from a theory standpoint on how to be able to do flight missions. If you wanna really sharpen up how to fly drones commercially and professionally, this is a day that you cannot miss. The fourth day is a commercial applications day where we're taking the first three days, putting it all together, and we're doing simulated training missions that you would normally do for commercial flying. What sets us apart from other training schools is that we teach you how to fly manually without any automation so that you're prepared to respond to the worst type of situation a pilot can experience. For more information about Steel City Drones training services, please visit our website at steelcityflightacademy.com.